I think in some ways death is a taboo subject. A little bit like sex. There's no doubt that the toughest thing about my job is that, that we are operating in, a, in an industry still that I think is not working wholeheartedly on behalf of the bereaved. My name is Poppy Marble. In 2012, started Poppy's Funerals. Ready? One, two, three. Ideas that, you know, that, that funeral directing is about heavy lifting and it's about having a strong stomach and it's about, you know, handling, you know, incredibly difficult emotional situations that you just need to kind of shut down. That's not how we work and that's not what we found to be true. In those early months when I was doing my research, it was never the dead body that, that caused me difficulty. It was the conditions that that dead body was in. Maybe collecting someone from a hospital that the body had not been treated with the, the amount of care and respect that I would hope in that setting. Even really basic things like this thing that funeral directors do where they call the body the deceased. It's a really unhelpful, kind of identity crushing thing that, that I'm sure helps people who work in mortuaries from connecting with their work and, and I don't think that's a good thing. So a typical day at Poppies uh, will be, phones will be ringing a lot um, and the people calling will probably be calling to say that somebody has died. at Poppies. Um, I was a florist previously. We're going to go to St George's Hospital um, to collect somebody who's died. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do now. So the first person I saw who died, um, you know, who, who I was collecting, when I first saw her that I thought the, the words that came to my mind were, oh, that's what happens. It was sort of a realisation of this thing that, that I, I knew happened but had never really considered, um, you know, was, was in front of me. And, and I then sort of processed that and, and dealt with what that means. Uh, I don't know, try to be aware of the fragility of life, I suppose. Obviously people die in different places, so it's not always from a hospital. Sometimes we collect people from their house if they've died at home, um, or from hospices or care homes. Um, yeah, but today's St George's. I, I would be uncomfortable to say that women are better caregivers than men. I, I don't think that's true. I think in this industry there is a there is a kind of issue with this kind of like laddie macho culture. Emotions are kind of shut down. You hear funeral directors all the time saying, you know, I just make sure I don't feel it or I make sure I don't connect or, you know, the work we do is so painful that I just have to kind of shut down and switch off and, and use black humour and and, and I, I don't I don't really like that. I disagree. I think if you're gonna be really good at your job you, you need to be open, you need to be connected. Imagine if like nurses or therapists, you know, said, well, as social workers, well, the way I get through my day is by shutting down and not connecting, then they would not be able to provide a good service at all. We don't embalm people, we don't put people through a conveyor belt experience. Every single person who comes to us, we will um, work as a team to think about what they need. We are lining this lovely pine coffin with um, this calico wrapping sheet. Uh, this is like a natural material impregnated with a kind of waterproof substance that means that if there were any fluids in the body, which mostly there aren't, they would be completely safe. Lots of funeral directors line their coffins with plastic, which is a real shame because it means that when you're buried, you're going in the ground basically in a, in a kind of plastic container. Um, so we're trying to do something which is biodegradable and which feels really lovely and natural. These coffins are lovely because they're, they're just solid pine uh, and you can sort of, it just feels different, it looks different. You'd think that the worst thing about my job would be 
dealing with people who were in really bad shape in the mortuary, you know, that, 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 that had very challenging physical conditions, or you'd think the worst thing about my job would be uh, listening to people's pain when it's at its rawest and most complicated, but there's no doubt that the toughest thing about my job is that, that we are operating in, a, in an industry still that I think is not working wholeheartedly on behalf of the bereaved. My name's Isabel Potter and I started working for Poppy 2013. It genuinely does feel like an exciting industry to be starting to revolutionise. I think the industry could, could have done with some, some, some uh, revolution maybe many decades ago, but it's, it's happening now and that's a great thing and we just encourage more change, more uh, flexibility, more choice for families, more information, more normal people talking about death. There's absolutely no doubt that working with the dying and working with the dead and working with the bereaved um, equips you to deal with your own mortality. I think if we can do something to just release people's natural instincts to share and talk, um, we will make a huge difference in how empowered people feel about the, what is inevitable to us all. We are not all going to have babies, we are not all going to get married or have civil partnerships, but we are all going to die. And, and yes, there's sadness, but there's sadness in life and, and that's, that's normal. And it's normal and natural to die and be dead. This work teaches you to do the things you need to do as soon as you can. I think seizing the day is, is a great phrase. I think probably tomorrow will come and probably the next few years will come and, and it's worth planning for the future. But I think getting on with your life is a really great, great idea.